private funding access is, is not evenly distributed uh, across the United States, across the world. And, and, and so because of that, there are many different dimensions along which some people have more access to private funding than others. So what you can look at is on the left with inflation adjustment, uh, white families wealth has sort of been surging over time, uh, while black families wealth has been fairly stagnant. I, I agree uh, that education can be a powerful tool to help think about closing gaps, but it's also important to sort of keep in mind when we look at the second graph um, that these gaps are, are present at all uh, along the education spectrum. If you put all of this together, it is, it is clear to me, if you, if you focus on equity gaps in, in, uh, in access and success as the organizing principle, then, then higher education would, uh, public investments in higher education would lead to economic and social empowerment. But more importantly, it'll also provide the, uh, provide the talent uh, the economy needs uh, for its uh, productivity growth, and, and, and for its economic progress um, because of the fact that uh, uh, most of the emergent jobs uh, will require some post-secondary credentials. Nationally, that number is two third of the current and emergent jobs require post-secondary credentials. In Minnesota, that is almost uh, three fourth. Colleges have different ways of subsidizing the student experience. And in public universities, that subsidy comes primarily through direct legislative appropriations from states, usually sometimes local areas, to the school. And that subsidy has declined markedly over time uh, for a variety of reasons. And it's declining in exactly a period where we're trying to go from a world where 20% of people get a college degree to a world where 60% or more get a college degree. So we see this trend increasing shares of young people and increasingly adults going to college or going back to college and the amount um, of money that we are allocating as a tax base to support that education is going down. And so over that time, you see that tuition is rising, but it's not necessarily that tuition is rising because the experience is more costly. It's actually that we're asking students themselves to foot a larger and larger share of the bill. A theme that's, that's um, threaded through all of these discussions is that any um, policy can be screwed up in practice. Right. So we, uh, there are policies that on paper uh, can look quite progressive. And so an example is um, uh, the high tuition, uh, high aid model that the US now has in place um, in theory should make college very inexpensive for uh, the lowest income students. Um, in practice, the policy is so complicated and the process for getting access to aid, the FAFSA, um, the verification process is so complicated that a lot of students who are eligible for a lot of aid don't know that they can get it. The part of your presentation that I found the most concerning or disturbing had to do with the only 15% of the respondents knowing about the aid available to them through the institution, right? So we run food pantries and we're distributing CARES money and we have a donor driven uh, emergency fund. We have a lot of these opportunities. Um, and and the, I think the challenge around communicating those, maybe destigmatizing them, maybe you know, uh, other kinds of ways to encourage uh, students who need to take advantage of them is something that I'm especially interested in. And I know other uh, higher education leaders are as well. Some people gravitate toward debt forgiveness on the idea that it is a, is a reasonable corollary to free college. And the reality is that under the leading free college programs, there's still going to be most uh, loans uh, continue to be borrowed. A lot of loans for professional programs, for parents, nonprofit schools, for profit schools. And even for students at public colleges, Pell Grants are only a little more than half of living uh, expenses. And so um, it isn't a necessarily a, a, a corollary uh, to free college. And if we did do debt uh, cancellation, you would sort of have to ask what happens next.
while public provision has an important role to play, that doesn't mean that we should have widespread free college or, or debt forgiveness, for instance. And while financial aid can benefit students for whom financial barriers are a key problem, it can also exacerbate inequities in higher education or benefit highly educated high-income households. Uh, as the last chart showed, most people who go to college are from higher income families to start with. Uh, when they leave college, they earn more than their peers who don't have the opportunity to go to college. So things like free college uh, or debt, widespread debt forgiveness uh, to those who would have paid for college themselves is expensive and regressive.